Hi, I'm Tommy Thompson and this is part one of my Pathfinding in Unity tutorial series. In this video series, we're going to be looking at how to use the navigation tools built into the Unity engine. Navigation is one of the most critical aspects of getting a non-player character behaving in a video game, given we want them to be reliable and explore the world without any real issues. Fortunately, video game engines often provide their own navigation tools in order to speed up this process. This tutorial will run across a number of videos as we first explore how to build the most critical part of this toolset, the navigation mesh or nav mesh, then how to make a character move upon it, run basic patrols, dynamically place characters onto nav meshes, build nav meshes at runtime and much more. In this first video we're going to focus on how to get a nav mesh working, followed by how to get a player to move across towards a fixed location on the surface. So first up, let's talk setup. I'm running on the 2017.1 release of the Unity engine. Now this is a little out of date, and that's because this tutorial was originally recorded and hosted on my other channel AI and Games. However, the features I'm working with in these earlier videos are still consistent and haven't changed. For our later videos when I'm doing dynamic nav mesh baking, you'll need to be running on at least Unity 5.6 or above. In addition, this tutorial series expects you to have a working understanding of both the Unity game engine as well as C-sharp programming, if you're new to one or either of these, you can check out the other tutorials we're hosting on this channel. So, with a starting project in place, my first port of call is I'm going to create the navigation mesh. The navigation mesh is a data structure that's calculated from a surface or area that we want our character to move on. We can apply this to a variety of meshes we have in a given scene in order to declare them as traversable. So let's start by creating a basic surface upon which we can create a navigation mesh. Create a plain game object in the editor. I'm going to right click, 3D object, and plane. And I'm going to put it at the center of the world, so 000. zero, zero. And let's make it a bit bigger. 5 by 5 by 5, I think, on the scale. Though, given it's a plane, increasing the scale on the Y has a negligible effect. All right, let's just check my camera. My camera's quite low. I'm going to move my camera up a little bit. And I'm maybe going to rotate it a little so I can see that ground more effectively. Yeah, rotate it 40 on the x-axis. Maybe move it out to about minus 20, 15. Yeah, that'll do. Means I can at least see the floor. It's looking at the floor. Great. So with that in mind, let's create the navigation mesh. To do this, head into the window menu at the top and you want to look for the navigation item. And that actually opens up something separate next to the inspector. In here, we can bake the nav mesh as well as make important settings that will influence how an agent, which is a character that moves on the mesh, explore that space. So working from left to right, we're going to look at each part. In the agent tab, this allows us to define different types of agents that will be able to walk across the nav mesh. For now, we're only going to have one, but we can customize aspects of its shape as well as its maximum height of steps and slopes it can navigate. Areas. This is actually where we can define specific tags that are used for parts of the world. Perhaps more importantly, we can attribute costs to them as well, as you can see on the right hand side. This allows us to create areas of the map that are deemed less desirable to walk across, like say we're walking through water or sand where it will slow us down. We can make that more expensive, but I'll come back to that in a later video. Bake. This is where we actually bake the navigation mesh of the environment and set the default settings used to bake that mesh. Object. This allows us to filter the scene in the hierarchy view such that we can identify parts that are deemed part of the navigation and terrain. More importantly, we can set an object as being navigation static, which is needed for it to be used in the navigation system. We'll be returning to many of these features in future videos, but for now I'll be focusing on the bake and object tabs. With these alone, we can build a basic navigation mesh. So let's start by going into the object tab which I already am, followed by selecting the plane that we have in the inspector. In fact, I'm going to quickly rename it to floor because that's actually what it is. Next, I'm now going to click on navigation static with relation to the floor. And this will declare that this space is part of the navigation space and it's not going to change its position or move. We kind of want that, otherwise the navigation mesh wouldn't be accurate if the floor was moving. In addition, it would mean we need to recalculate the nav mesh every frame to compensate. That's actually quite expensive, we'll deal with all that in a future tutorial. With the navigation static box ticked, next we head back into the bake tab. 
Now for the purposes of this example, we don't really need to worry about the settings and can leave them as they are. However, this will prove more useful in later tutorials as we begin to dictate whether an area is too tight or too high for an agent to move through. For now though, let's leave these settings as they are and press the bake button. I need to save the scene, of course I do, forgot about that. Let's go in, I'm going to call this Nav Mesh Basic, and I put it in my scenes folder. Let's save it, and it built! Now, if this has all went according to plan, you'll note that in the scene view, let's maybe move this back a little bit so we can see the scene view a little bit better, the plane now has a bluish square being drawn over it. Voila! That's a nav mesh. It's not terribly exciting, but we're going to have something drive on it next. In addition, note that the navigation mesh is actually saved in a folder named after the scene in the same folder in which I saved my scene. And that's actually just got the basic built navigation mesh settings that were baked for this particular scene. But with the nav mesh in place, our next job is to build the navigation agent. A nav mesh agent is an object that can move around the environment using the navigation mesh. So we're going to create just a basic Unity cube and then make that the navigation agent. So let's go 3D object cube and I'm going to call it agent. Actually, no, let's call it NPC because that's kind of what it is. We'll set it here. Actually, I'm going to make it maybe one unit off the floor so we can stand out a little bit. But also, I've actually prepared a material for it because I realized that the floor is white, the player is white. I don't really want that. So I'm going to drag and drop this material so it's red. You can see this is just a basic Unity material and all I've done is change the albedo to red. So you can do that if you want. But I find it really useful. That way I can clearly denote where the little dude is compared to the rest of the environment. Now with the NPC selected, let's go over into the inspector and I'm going to add a nav mesh agent. And we can do that in one of two ways. You can click on the add component and you can go down to, where is it? Navigation, nav mesh agent, or if I just undo that, just type nav mesh agent, hit enter, there we go. With your agent added, it's all ready to go to move around the map. The thing is, it's not actually gonna move. I click play, it doesn't actually do anything. It just sort of sits there. And that's because while the nav mesh agent is the code that we require in order to interface with the navigation mesh, we then need to write extra code to call the nav mesh agent to use that nav mesh to go to a particular location. So let's write some C sharp code. Let's start by going into, I've got a code folder prepared and I'm going to click create and C sharp script. Mm. Class, and I'm going to call it MPC Move. And I'm going to use this as my base code that's going to call the nav mesh to get that character to move. So once it's ready, go into your code editor of choice. I use Visual Studio. And I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. There we go. Now I'm going to write this code over the next couple of seconds and I just want you to kind of follow along with me and then I'll, what I'll do is I'll walk back through this code um, throughout the rest of the video. I'm going to create a serialized game object and it's a serialized variable. It's going to be a transform and I'm going to call it destination. And then I'm also going to create a reference to a nav mesh agent, which will just be called nav mesh agent. I'm going to right click actions and then I'm going to make sure I'm using the unity engine.ai namespace that way it resolves any compilation error there move those braces down yuck like that okay and then I'm going to actually say that the nav mesh agent is at the component of nav mesh agent that is attached to this game object so spoiler alert we're going to be adding this class this npc move class to the player of the npc character when we're done so i'm saying to it find the nav mesh agent component that is attached to this and then i'm just going to run a quick if check on that and say if the nav mesh agent is null i'm going to have a fit the nav mesh, Ew, I can't type 
the nav mesh agent component is not attached to and then game object dot name so my code will have a little hissy fit in the event I have not added the nav mesh agent to the same game object that the NPC move is attached to and if I do have the nav mesh agent and all's good I'm going to run a method called set destination now I actually don't need the update method here so let's get rid of that I'm going to right click on that quick actions and refactorings generate a method called set destination and I'm going to implement it if destination does not equal null so if we have actually set a destination I'm going to get a target vector of type vector 3 which is destination dot transform dot position and then I'm going to say to the nav mesh agent set your destination as the target vector boom done so this requires a basic level of understanding of Unity itself, but in the start method I'm grabbing a reference to the nav mesh agent component added to the NPC character. In addition, I then run a check to ensure it's not null and that we've actually found the reference. In the event we found the nav mesh successfully, I then set the destination. The destination is based on the transform variable that I have exposed in the Unity editor by using the serialize field command. Now if that isn't null, I get the position from that transform and set it as the destination in the nav mesh agent. So let's quickly compile. You can hit Control shift b or just build, build solution. This should work fine. Should. Should. Hooray! And let's go back into Unity. So now, grab the NPC, and I'm going to drag and drop the NPC move onto it. Alrighty. I have now got it on there. But you'll note that the destination variable is visible, and it says none at the moment meaning we need to give it a destination so let's so next up let's create a game object to move towards right click in the hierarchy click 3d object and i'm going to create a sphere oops and i'm going to set it to the same point in the world right now i've also got another material set up for this so i'm going to drag and drop that over it and it makes it blue all right i'm just going to put that somewhere and then lastly, I'm going to go back into the NPC and I'm going to drag and drop the sphere onto the destination. And you can see there it's now referring to the sphere's transform. And if I click on it, it says, oh, that game object there. So now the NPC's destination has been set as the sphere. So with that all done, go ahead and click play. And hooray, our little cube moves to the sphere and then stops when he overlaps with it. Awesome. off I'm going to move the sphere somewhere else just to show you that it's not just stuck over there it'll move Hooray! moving along on the navigation mesh happy days so in this first tutorial we've learned how to set up the navigation mesh and have a character move within it feel free to play around with this environment and change the shape of it but remember the need to build the nav mesh after you change all this stuff in part two we're going to look at how to add obstacles to the environment in order to make it more interesting this has been part one of the Unity Pathfinding tutorial series here on Table Flip Games. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more game dev tutorials. Plus, our channel is supported over on Patreon, so if you'd like to get access to our videos early, vote on new topics and get access to the original source materials, head on over to patreon.com forward slash tableflipgames. Thanks for watching, I'll see you again soon.